it's just Damien proving that Art the Clown gives zero Fs and he will kill anything that moves. <laughs> Guys, I'm not even going to do an intro. Um, I just got back from seeing Terrifier 3 earlier today and wow, I have to talk about it because Terrifier 3 was one of those movies that Believe it or not, even though seeing the life-size Art the Clown, I wasn't hugely excited for this thing. I got some crap for saying that earlier this year. It wasn't at my top, highest anticipated. It was one of those movies that, yeah, I'll check it out, but I'm not over the moon excited for it. Um, I got Fear of Missing Out, FOMO, like a couple of days before the movie premiered in theaters. Um, the same thing happened with me with Long Legs and Late Night with the Devil, where I wasn't uber excited for him. But then it was like a couple of days before they hit theaters, I got FOMO and wanted to check them out. Um, randomly got super excited to check out Terrifier, so I ended up going. And I am so glad I did. I'm just going to immediately go into the plot. And also, this is a spoiler review completely. I'm going to be going over all the little details because I feel like this movie is just too complex and detailed to explain and beat around the bush um to go around spoilers so i'm just gonna go straight into spoilers so you've been warned please check out terrifier 3 support this little indie um franchise that is really skyrocketing in the mainstream support it as much as you can i highly recommend you do so and straight into the plot this movie takes place five years after the events of the last movie um, where you follow Sienna, she's going to her aunt and uncle's house, trying to calm down after the events of Terrifier 2. Um, she went to, like, this, like, um, mental hospital to really try to fix herself. The brother, um, I don't remember his name, he's off to college, and he's doing his own thing, and, um, Terrifier, or, that's not his name, Art the Clown, um, comes out of hibernation or whatever you want to call it. Um, and he has a secret accomplice, which is the girl from the first movie. And they both um, come back to haunt Sienna once again. Um, moving off straight to my pros. Um, the Terrifier series gimmick. Um, what it's really known for. Probably, for sure, the main thing that it's known for. It's gore. It's gore, like, like, come on. Um, it feels like every single movie, especially after watching Terrifier 3, every single movie in this franchise has had that scene. Um, the first movie, you have the girl who's getting sawed in half, um, which was just pretty groundbreaking for a low-budget horror movie, especially at that time. Terrifier 2 has the 10-minute bedroom kill scene where he's just cutting her up, that just insane jaw-dropping scene. Terrifier 3 has more than one scenes like that. Um, every single kill scene, every single gore scene is just packed to the brim with amazing practical effects. Stuff that I've never seen before when it comes to um, creativity in gore scenes in the horror genre. There's scenes in here, again, that I've just, I've never seen anything like it. Um, the entire shower scene in the um, locker room, bathroom, whatever you want to call it, that whole entire segment is this movie's bedroom scene, only because it is a very lengthy kill. There's a couple of super lengthy kills that's also kind of what Terrifier is known for. Not only amazing kills and amazing gore, but also long kills and long gore that really makes you sit and ponder upon like this like gory bloodbath. But that shower scene alone, um, probably like an eight minute kill scene. And it does not hold back whatsoever. This whole entire movie does not hold back. Um, that whole kill scene with the, um, the freeze mist gun thing. I don't know what you want to call it. Where he just hammers these guys limbs, this guy's limbs off. Like, it looked real. Like, like the gore effects in this movie... You give Damien Leone a budget, and this man can whip up some amazing-looking effects. Um, I've watched some interviews. I don't think he did all of the makeup. I think he helped, for sure. But he had a big budget, so he hired a bunch of professionals, and you can tell 
Um, no hate on Damien Leone. I'm sure he's a great makeup artist. There's some great stuff in the short film that is in All Hallows Eve that is really good makeup effects. But the makeup effects here really take it to the next level. Um, I said this before, I think on Instagram or something. Terrifier 2 um, definitely had some grotesque, shocking moments when it came to its gore. There's no doubt about that. It sh- shook the whole world when it came out. People were fainting and throwing up in theaters. Um, allegedly. <laughs> they tried to say that shit again. But um, apparently they actually did. I don't know. I don't know whose word you're going to take. Anyways, people were passing out, throwing up, whatever. It was a huge commotion in 2022. Out of nowhere. Because I've heard of the first Terrifier at that time. Um, a little indie movie that was on Netflix for a couple years that I saw pictures and little teaser trailers of. Um, I don't know where there's a sequel and it's getting um, it's getting like critical acclaimed like stuff thrown at it and I'm like whoa where did this come from and it ended up being an amazing movie. Um, anyways, I kind of forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, the gore scenes in Terrifier too, fantastic. There's some great scenes for sure. But it also kind of had like a goofy, campy flavor and tone to it. Um, you watch Terrifier 2, you definitely get more of like the 80s um, campy, over-the-top, sleazy moments. Especially when you get Sienna in her whole fantastical armor and get up and whatever. Terrifier 3 has a lot of comedic mo- moments for sure. I mean, Art the Clown has goofy as hell moments in here there's some really funny moments like laugh out loud funny I mean the whole theater was laughing um but this dude is so freaking mean in this movie compared to Terrifier 1 and 2 this is the most brutal that this character has ever been um obviously this is spoiler review so you guys have most likely seen the movie um kids get killed several times um they don't show it in detail but they do show the aftermath of some limbs little limbs laying on the ground it's just damien proving that art the clown gives zero f's and he will kill anything that moves and it really makes you scared of the character as a whole this movie is mean it holds no merit it doesn't have rules and i think that's what's so cool about terrifier 3 and one of my favorite things about it is it really breaks the rules. The fact that this movie is even in... The- like, even if it was in limited theaters, I would be surprised, let alone worldwide, um, shocks me. It shocks me that this movie is so-called rated R. Um, even though I think in some countries, some areas, it's unrated. Where I'm at, the theater said it was rated R. So the fact that it's even rated is just insane to me. It's getting banned in France and England um, from what I've heard on, on the news. It's insane to me. Um, and it really does live up to the hype to that standpoint. The gore, I don't want to overhype it. One of the goriest horror movies I've ever laid my eyes on. Probably, probably it's up there. Um, obviously, you got classics like Dead Alive, which honestly is more gross. <laughs> that movie is nasty as hell. It's more gross than gory. Um, Terrifier 3 has its gross moments, but it is just brutal as hell. You, you, you get everything you want when it comes to the gore. Another thing I really liked, another pro about the movie, I loved how it connected the whole entire series so far, even connecting the ninth circle short film that was in All Hallows Eve, which is just like crazy to me. Um, you don't get that until toward the end of the movie where you get a little callback. Chicks reading a book called The Ninth Circle. And then you also get all of that, you know, cult, God, devil, philosophical, m- mythological, what- whatever, I can't speak. When you get all those elements, um, really reminding me of Ninth Circle, you get stuff that ties to the first movie. Um, the, after you get the opening scene, which again is just freaking gory, brutal masterpiece of an opening scene, probably one of my favorite opening scenes in any horror movie ever. Um, but after you get that, it directly connects to Terrifier 2's ending, which I, I will say 
I never really cared for the ending of Terrifier 2. You get the whole thing at the mental asylum where the girl is giving birth to the head. Too goofy for me. I never really liked that. Um, the way that this movie ties into that ending really made me appreciate that ending a hell of a lot more. Um, and I want to rewatch Terrifier 2 to really see how it holds up after seeing how they connected it to in the third movie because they really polished some questions and they answered them in a really good way. Um, so I really enjoyed how this movie really meshed all the storylines together. Um, this is the most plot heavy out of the three. Um, Terrifier 1 had no plot at all. Two girls are drunk as hell. They go to this um, pizza parlor and they get, um, they get terrorized and stalked by this killer clown. End of story. The second movie, you get a lot more plot-heavy stuff, throwing in um, um, mythological and philosophical things, for sure, undertones, um, different fantasy elements, throwing all that in, um, having a main character, having set rules, um, having this um, group of characters, Sienna, the, the brother, the friend, the mom, having all these big set pieces, and it was a lot more elaborate. There was definitely a plot in two. Terrifier 3 basically adds on to not only Terrifier's 2 plot, but a whole different plot. You get a lot of cool background stories about Art the Clown himself. A lot of cool background stories about Sienna's dad. Um, the characters from the second movie continue making like a core um, main character, at least for a series of movies, as Damien said, that he was inspired by franchises like Halloween that kind of have certain movies that have different characters. So this is like the Sienna storyline so keeping that from terrifier 2 and putting that like there's a lot of complex things with terrifier 3 they had a lot of money to work with they had a lot of ideas to throw out there it is just i don't know what my point is i'm just saying like this movie is a lot more plot heavy um as i said before terrifier 1 full-on slasher full-on goofy low budget um slasher that throws back to 80s horror for sure. Terrifier 2 um, goes more t on its own path, different tone, more again, more fantasy influences. Terrifier 3 mixes the grindhouse low budget slasher with the fantasy elements toward the end, and it again mixes very, very, very freaking well. Another thing I loved um, is how shocking this movie was. You could count this in the gore. Um, pro that I had earlier, but there's some scenes in here that mall scene <sighs> Like the the again this movie mixes stuff it balances stuff so freaking well the humor and the horror Is balanced so well where you're laughing one minute and the next minute you're going like this because you're seeing something that you've never freaking seen on, on screen before like the fact that it can go from art the clown making funny facial expressions um, to him messing around with Clint Howard and all them, to somebody literally getting blown up by a bomb in a mall. Like, it, it, it goes from zero to a hundred. It goes, like, you can go from gasping and holding your breath and putting your mouth against your face to out loud laughing. It's an experience that I've never experienced before. Um, the whole scene, like, leading up to the shower scene where... Art the Clown is reacting to what the girl's saying. That was hilarious. Like, again, they're balancing stuff really well. But again, shocking scenes. That mall scene, amazing. Opening scene, again, will go down in history. There's no doubt about it. 20 years from now, people will be talking about how shocking this opening scene was, which was kind of like the drama around it. Um, is Damien only putting in Killing Kids in Terrifier 3 to get word of mouth? Um, Personally, I think that's half true. He definitely knew that it would be shocking. He knew that people would talk about it, get word of mouth. Word of, word of mouth is Terrifier's best friend. Um, that's the reason why people fell in love with Terrifier 2. That's the reason why it became almost an instant success after Terrifier 2 is because people were talking about it. There was that whole um, conversation about how people were passing out and how it was the goriest movie ever. That really put the movie on the mainstream. Um, Terrifier 3 definitely had that communication around it where people are like, oh my God, this trailer insinuates that he's going to kill this child. 
Um, that was like the first thing that people were talking about when that teaser dropped. So I half think that that's true. You definitely want people talking about that, people being shocked about that. And there are several moments where kids get suddenly murdered. And he probably knew that that would get audible gasps, um, which is you want stuff, shocking moments like that in horror movies when you're making a horror movie, for sure. He definitely wanted that, but I also think there was a side to where, again, he was trying to prove a point. He's trying to tell you guys that, he, like, this Art the Clown guy is not like your other slasher villains. He holds no merit. He has no rules. Um, like how um, Michael Myers doesn't really necessarily kill kids. Um, I think Jason killed a kid in a movie. Um, but again, they don't show it. Um, I know kids die in sleepaway camp, but they only show, like, torn up sleeping bags. This movie shows, like, actual child's limbs. He pushes the, the barrier. And again, the fact that this is in theaters is mind-numbing. I can't believe that. Um, but again, he like this movie pushes the barrier. Um, another thing that I really loved was the whole final act. People don't like the final act. I'm seeing people complain about it. I loved it. I loved how batshit crazy it went and how quickly it went like that to where you're... Um, this whole movie is kind of slasher um just super gory gnarly slasher the ending randomly goes into um i say randomly it was sprinkled throughout the story but the ending kind of hard shifts into this exorcist type thing where things are flying around eyes are white and there's like this demon possession type thing not necessarily but there's this whole like um psychological thing happening where the movie gets really weird um, having the pit of hell open up. And I thought it was really, really, really cool. I, again, I think he handled those kinds of tones a lot better here than he did in part two. Um, part two felt more cheesy than it did um, weird, bizarre, but unique and um, fascinating. It felt more cheesy and campy. Um, where this one feels a lot more serious and gritty in tone to where you appreciate the fantasy moments a lot more. At least I did. The ending was really cool. How she, like, dude, like, forgive me, I forget the actress's name, but the girl who plays Sienna, which is another pro that I'll touch on, she does fantastic um, with the choreography. I know she does it all herself. Fantastic, because that whole ending scene, she killed it. Um, which, again, moving on to my next pro, they really did touch on the acting. The acting was my least favorite thing about Terrifier 2. I guess Terrifier 1 as well, which I don't really care for Terrifier 1. Um, I think it's a very drag movie, dragged out movie. Terrifier 2 was really good, except for the acting. The acting really dragged it down for me. Terrifier 3, the acting performances, even from the returning people, are amazing. The brother still probably my least favorite acting performance in the movie. And I'm sorry, Chris Jericho, not a great acting performance. But you're not an actor, so I guess I should give you the benefit of the doubt. But, um... Sienna, dude, she upped her game. That, like, again, toward the final act, she really shines in those emotional scenes. Um, she's an amazing main character, an amazing main character. I mean, Art the Clown's the main character, but she's an amazing final girl, um, main, main um, victim to the killer. Um, of course, David Howard Thornton. Again, he really amps up the humor and really, like, amps up the clown, um, tone to the character having a lot more funny gags and stuff I thought he did great this is the best that art's been um and yeah I don't know the acting's great the performances are all freaking fantastic dude uh, I don't know what else there is to talk about this movie like Terrifier 3 really blew my mind I don't have a con the only thing that um I didn't like and um I don't know the it felt like it's hard to explain. The movie took a while to get rolling. Um, of course, you get the killer opening, but then it kind of jumps in time periods, and it was it kind of got got me worried when you have that whole segment where they're camping out in that house for five years. Had me worried, dude, because I was like, we're like ten minutes in, and they've literally have just showed slow panning shots of them walking around this creepy house. When is it gonna happen? Or like flashback scenes for 10 minutes. Like when is the movie gonna start? I would say about 30 minutes in once you start getting like the the awesome. I would say like 
to the bar scene where he's in the bar with Clint Howard. I was like, okay, I get what they're doing. This is freaking awesome. You, you have me. You pulled me in. I am into this. And it never pulled me back out. Um, I'm giving Terrifier 3 a 4.5 out of 5. This movie really blew me away. It's one of my favorites of the year. Um, I'm glad I went to sit in theaters. I'm glad I'm supporting it. I'm excited for Terrifier 4, which is apparently um, the second to last, if not the last of the franchise, which I think is good that he's cutting things short. You don't want to milk it, um, which eventually will happen when he sells it. He'll sell it at one point. They're all for him like a billion. He'll sell it. But um, yeah, I don't know. This Terrifier 3 really shocked me. Again, it breaks the rules. It holds no merit. It is a clear step up from not only, like, it's a, it's leaps and bounds better than the first one. I mean, I think that anybody can agree with that. But the second one, which I think is a great slasher film, just a fantastic slasher film. It is leaps and bounds better than the second one, which I was not really expecting. Um, maybe leaps and bounds is is... A little exaggerated it's a lot better than the second one um, by a pretty big margin and it is definitely my favorite out of any of the movies um, I would say it would go terrifier one if you're gonna count all Hallows Eve I put all Hallows Eve above terrifier one because I really like all Hallows Eve I think it's a really solid anthology and then I would put terrifier two terrifier three um, this movie blew me away that's all I'm gonna say about it um, pretty lengthy review Again, spoiler filled. I'm sorry about that. But if you guys enjoyed the video, please subscribe, turn on the bell, follow my Instagram at IanLives underscore, and follow my letterbox at We Hate Ian. If you guys have seen Terrifier 3, please let me know your thoughts about it below. Let me know if it's your favorite of the franchise or not. And um, yeah, I absolutely love you guys, and I will see you guys next time. Um, peace.